Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Brent Nextran. I'm a freelance filmmaker and DP, and today we're gonna to be talking about my camera setup and the stuff I like about it, what I use it for, and what to look for when you're building your own camera setup. Okay, so let's get started and talk about what my camera setup is. I'm gonna turn it on. So this is a C300 Mark III. So here it is, all booted up. There we go. Okay, so first let's start off with talking about the setup itself. So right here, I have a kind of a, a mishmash of uh, brands and accessories, and all of it is kind of tailored to what I do. I do a lot of corporate, I do a lot of uh, music performance, kind of live stream work, and I do a little bit of music videos. So uh, starting off, we've got a small rig top plate and I have a small rig top handle attached using a NATO bracket. I've got a wooden camera PL mount right here, as well as a wooden camera V mount plate in the back. Next, we have the map box. I uh, recently got this. This is a Pro Aim map box. This is the MV10. A uh, really great lightweight map box. Uh, it's got a carbon fiber hood, uh, kind of a rubberized um, uh, map box part. I forget what this part is called, uh, but the ring is aluminum and then the outer bits here is plastic. I think it's like an ABS plastic, uh, but it's a really great, uh, really affordable uh, solution for a map box with 114 millimeter uh, diameter right here. Uh, so I highly recommend this guy. It's pretty awesome. I think I got it for about $110. Um, and it's pretty much a copy of the Bright Tangerine Misfit system. So I think they just kind of copied and pasted it and stole the design really. Uh, but it, it's, it works really well, I like it a lot. Next, let's talk about the monitor here. This is the OCG7 monitor. Uh, it's 3000 nits and it's a uh, 1920 by 1200. So it's a little bit taller, which is nice. So you can have some of your information on the top screen there. Uh, it's very, very bright. It's got 3D LUT support, so I have some of my uh, custom 3D LUTs on here. I've got the uh, the buttery LUTs loaded up on here. I really like to use those. Okay, so I'm gonna power this down so I can kind of take some of these pieces off of the rig. Uh, so right now I've got the Watson Pro. This is the VM160SE. Uh, so right here, this is the wooden camera um, V-mount plate for the C300. Um, it's built really, really well. I like that I can adjust this, kind of get it out of the way of the uh, built-in battery if I want to use that as well. Um, you can kind of slide up and down and it's got a pa power pass-through, which is cool. So I can actually plug the camera into wall power through here. Really like this plate. I think it's uh, one of the more prof like professional accessories I have because of the power pass-through as well as the charging capabilities of it. Um, I think it's definitely worth uh, what wooden, char wooden, wooden camera charges for it. Uh, a couple more small accessories I have on this guy. I've got this little right angle a red SDI cable. Um, it's a good length for this little run that I've got it going. Uh, so getting a nice, I think it's about a two foot cable. Um, it's very uh, manageable with just the little, little clips it's got on there. The um, monitor has a locking barrel connector right here. And that actually comes with the OC monitor, which I really like. And then I just put the D tap in right here on the battery plate. Uh, let's talk about cards. So I've got, these are really cool little cards. So this is a one terabyte uh, CF Express card. And these are from a not so well-known brand. This is Pergear. And I've had really a really good luck with this brand. And I haven't had any issues with these Pergear cards. Um, this card also only cost me $300 and it's a one terabyte card. Uh, which is super cool if you're recording in the raw codecs on here, which are a lot more data hungry. They're about one gigabit per second. Okay, so I think one thing I would change about this camera, kind of go over pros and cons now, uh, is the battery system. Uh, Watson Pro, these are great kind of budget batteries. 
uh, but they're kind of big and they're kind of heavy. Uh, if I was to start over and kind of rebuild a system for somebody, I would definitely suggest going with something in like a micro series that you can fit on uh, smaller camera systems. Uh, these are just a little bit big for uh, kind of running gun filmmaking. And once you get them on here, they become pretty heavy um, moving the camera around. I think one of my favorite pieces of equipment in this setup is actually the map box. And part of that is just kind of the price point this map box is at. Um, at this price point, all you really have are really, really cheap small rig and tilt a map boxes. And most of those don't fit four by five filters. They typically have their own proprietary filter system uh, that you have to kind of invest into and then you can't use, you know, universal four by five filters. So that's one of the reasons that I got this map box is I can actually stack two four by five filters inside of here and they're kind of sandwiched together. It's a little weird. I've only used one filter at a time so far, uh, but it is allegedly a two stage map box. This camera has a really good weight to it to get nice and smooth handheld. With a lot of lighter camera systems, it's hard to get smooth handheld because you don't have that inertia of a large camera body. Um, I forget who says it, a heavy camera is a steady camera. And that's that's kind of what I like here is the, the heaviness of the camera and kind of the, the profile of it, where all the buttons are laid out. I think it's kind of on the left side here on the operator side, which is nice. Um, and then it's got a nice handle right here, all built in. And it's, it sits kind of snug up against me really nicely. And it, I don't have any weird like micro jitters in the footage. If I was to kind of uh, sum up uh, some advice that I wish I had been given uh, before I bought this camera, it would be to uh, be patient and to do as much research as possible on that camera and also wait for used deals. Uh, I bought this camera new, but shortly after I bought this camera, uh, the price dropped a little bit. So that's gonna wrap up the video. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, leave them down in the comments below. Uh, hit the like button if you wanna see me make some more content uh, about cameras and color grading and editing. Uh, I'm very passionate about building cameras and color grading, and I love using DaVinci Resolve. So that's gonna wrap up the video. I'll catch you guys in the next one, bye.